I mean, it's a great honor to speak to a group of such highly engaged teachers and educators and folks that care so much about our young students, because I think that's something that I've, that I've really had as a passion of mine for some time. So I thought maybe what I'd do is start off by sharing a little bit of some of the things that helped me end up where I am and how I think about teaching and learning, but learning especially. And it might give you some insight into why Lab Exchange is actually built the way it is. So for those of you that can hear my accent, um, I actually was born and raised in Jamaica, the island. Um, and, I, and I wasn't born and raised in sort of the sexy part of Jamaica, on the North Coast with the beaches and the resorts and all of that. I was born and raised in Kingston, kind of a rough town, very energizing, but still kind of a wild and crazy place to grow up. So for me, as I think is so often the case for many of us, it's a high school teacher that really made an enormous difference in my life. And in particular, there was a high school teacher that I think pulled me into science more than anyone else, Mr. Gordon. And I went to a high school that had virtually no resources. We didn't have equipment, we had barely any chemicals, and it was really an extremely simplified kind of set of labs, if any, that we could do. So at that time, I was thinking like so many do that, well, wow, science is this mountain of facts, amazing people do science. My job at this point in my life is simply to memorize all those things. And maybe someday, if I'm really, really lucky, I might get to actually do science and pose a question and chase it. And one thing Mr. Gordon did for me was that there he was in a lab with a class, 16 of us in, in the class where there were no resources. And what he decided to do, he said, you know what? Why don't each of you pick a problem that you want to do and go chase it? And in fact, my job is to really help you think about where you need to find information, who are the people you might want to talk to, how do you bootstrap into the ideas that you need to actually do what you're hoping to do. And so, of course, so many of you are familiar with this as project-based learning, challenge-driven education, et cetera, et cetera. But for a kid in Jamaica with no resources, it was really transformative to be given the agency to actually be able to tackle a problem and realize that, you know what? Science is not something that's fed to me right now. Science is something that I can actually do myself. I know, and I know that Omar and a number of other folks, Tammy, um, I mean, the previous panel really talked about this and how you can energize students. And I was certainly absolutely energized in this way. And so in a way, if we fast forward to today, how I think about Lab Exchange, which is a sort of an online learning platform which I've built, is very much focused on this idea of agency. That both students and instructors, both students and teachers, need to be given greater agency in the realm of online learning so that they can bootstrap into what they need to know. They can assemble sort of their own sorts of narratives, if you will, from high quality materials. And very importantly, they can personalize it. And so, um, so, so I helped found Harvard X and I was there at the building of the edX platform. And so with edX, we really wanted to share a lot with the world but I'll be perfectly honest, we were very much in the modality of, we build an online course, you take it. End of story. And we always hoped that teachers would be able to use our online courses, but you know, you're teaching a, a biology course in high school, right? Can you take an entire 14 week course and somehow use that in your classroom? How is that gonna work? Because you need to adapt it to your class and there really was no way of doing this. So a couple of years ago, after building um, Harvard X, I stepped away from Harvard X to do what I feel strongly is the next evolutionary step, right? That would give for the first time genuine agency in online learning. And what was great was that building on top of what was designed for edX, which is the only at scale open source online learning platform, completely open source, is that I was able to use that and unlock so many of the cool things that we had built for the edX MOOCs and make them available to everyone. So this is Lab Exchange. 
which was launched in January on the UN um, International Day for Education, January 24th. So we're, we're pretty new in terms of being sort of online. And Lab Exchange is focused on life sciences, broadly construed, and all the other STEM fields that have a clear intersection with life sciences. We are new, so we're still adding content, we're still building, we're still adding functionality. But one of the critical things that we decided to do was that instead of having courses in the traditional sense, imagine all of the material that you could unbundle out of these online courses, videos, diagrams, text, anything you could want, and imagine if for the first time you could search and find all of those materials. But once you have those materials, what can you really do with them? Well, for us, the very important thing is what we call a pathway. So that here's an example of a lab exchange build pathway that my team built focused on the coronavirus, going from bats to humans to pandemic. But the principle of a pathway is this is what you might use for like a single class or maybe for a week at most. And it's putting together readings, video, interactives, assignments, a glossary into a single highly interactive sequence, what we call a pathway, fully aligned with the learning objectives that you have developed. Now, this is a pathway that was done by Lab Exchange, but the kicker here is that any of us, any of you can go and make this, right? Everyone is empowered to do this. And so what we did was to try and build a learning model that's quite different, right? So that what we think of, and here's an example of a Lab Exchange sort of cluster of content, each of these sort of hexagons represents a very specific pathway. You know, this one is focused on bacterial transformation. What we've woven into it is a lot of content drawn from our partners like OpenStax, et cetera, but we've also built a series of assets, sort of lab exchange assets that we think do things that are very special. So one of the things that we've built is a form of um, lab simulation, a virtual simulation. We have 12 of these so far that actually allows you to lead students through at different levels a particular kind of lab. In this case, it's transforming bacteria. And the way the simulation works, we always set the context. Students can look at the various materials and what those materials are supposed to do. Then like any good scientist, students should make a prediction of what is going to happen. Then they get to read the protocol at the highest level. Then they dive into the actual protocol itself and they can go step by step by step and take their own notes. And they do it in the context of a virtual lab space. So we, are, so we have developed sort of virtual pipetters, right? You have to make sure that you choose the right tip, which I clearly didn't do. That's why it gave me a warning. We have tried to simplify this so that we really focus on not so much incredibly intricate things, but what are the critical things that you need to do? So you need to set a volume, right? If you're working with a water bath, you know, you, you, know, you need to set the temperature, you need to set the time, you need to start it, all of these things, right? So the way this works is that you can actually execute the experiment and after you're done, you see your results, I didn't actually do anything, which is why there are no results and they're incorrect because you would normally see them there. Students can then actually reflect on this and then you get a summary of what you did. So there are 12 of these so far. We intend to build basically another 40 of these over the next year or two. And the idea is to touch on really major techniques that allow you to experience the virtual process of planning an experiment, making predictions, actually doing it, comparing your results, troubleshooting the results, and doing all these things that we think are so critical to science. But all that being said, so I'm showing you lab exchange content, you as an educator, so by the way, you can access all of this for free. I should have said this earlier, lab exchange is free, free forever. We never ask you for money and never will. And so what that means though, is that you can access any of the public content from all of our many partners that's highly vetted, including FET, including the Welcome Genome Trust, 
a selection of things from our partners at, at Khan Academy, etc. So you can remix all of these amazing things. But when you register as an educator, you get an educator dashboard. So what you're seeing right here are in fact, when I had to do the pivot of my Harvard course, this is my private library of all the material I uploaded for my Harvard, club, Harvard course. And what you can do is that you can add content into your own library. You can add video, documents, podcast audio, you can build your own assessments, add images, but very importantly, you can build pathways. So you remember I said this before, you have the power to build your own pathway. So you can go and say, you know what? I wanna teach my students something about COVID, right? So what do we have in the library on COVID? Ah, we have this super cool sort of uh, visualization from BioDigital. And okay, here's something about the scale of the outbreak from Lab Exchange. But then you can go to your own content and say, okay, here's something I uploaded on can COVID-19 stress have an impact on pregnancy? That's a really important reading. So let me add that as well. And you add the three items and what you end up with is your own pathway, right? And so you can lead your students through this pathway. You set all of your learning objectives and then you publish this privately. And the way in which you, you use this for the students is that you create your own private class, right? So here we see, for example, so this is the Harvard class that I did in um, um, this spring. And what you can see is that, let's go into learner view. Here are the 88 students that I had in my Harvard class. And for every lecture I created for them, my own pathway. And students would actually do this. By the way, you'll have to forgive me. My home Wi-Fi is terrible today. I don't know what's going on. But with the pathway, oh, this is very strange. It's also the risk of doing anything live. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think my Wi-Fi may have quit on me somehow. Very strange. Let's, tr let's tr try this again. But yeah, so here's a pathway that I built pulling material from different sources. I added in my own lectures. I do a little break time thing for fun. What I call breakouts are in fact assessments that I wrote specifically to go with my videos. And then here are my learning objectives. So you can do this. You create a completely private class. You invite your students to be a part of it. So what's important about this is that we want to unlock and really give students the agency to find the material that they need, but also give you, the teacher, the power to customize and pull together multiple things that you can do, right? So that you can pull things together and you can create a unique narrative for what you're doing. So that's incredibly important. And to really help sort of give you a background for this, we're partnered with OpenStax at Rice and where it's over time taking all of their books. We're taking all of their books and we're unbundling them on Lab Exchange. So here's the AP Biology. I mean, actually, no, not this one. This is the non-majors biology book from OpenStax. Each of these is an, individ is an individual chapter, but then we broke up the chapter so that each and every section is in fact, each subtopic is a separate asset. So that with that asset, you're able to actually pick what parts of the book you want. Here's everything for that specific topic on the mechanisms of evolution. And then you can drop that into your learning pathway for your students. So that's something we feel is completely crucial. So this is kind of a fire hose. There's actually a lot of other things on the platform. There's a type of simulation for experimental design, et cetera. I should also say that all of the simulations that were built were built in HTML5. So what that means is that they're actually very bandwidth light. So they don't require a huge amount of bandwidth and we're also set up for mobile. So we work on tablets, we work on phones, all of that is set up as well. Um, I should also mention, I can't show this to you, but I should also mention that when you have um, a class you get all of the data in terms of how your students are doing on their assessments, 
have they looked at the videos, have they done the readings, et cetera, your students also get their, their individual data as well. So it's a way for you to really reach out to them and help them. So the final thing that I'll talk about is that another thing we're really interested with all of this is the notion of representation. Very often, the same voices, the same stories, the same cases are told. And that even if we create classes with active learning, we're nevertheless telling the same stories of the same people that tend to look a certain way in science. So one thing we're starting to build out in, in collaboration with the Journal of Stories in Science is creating a whole host of rich narratives that are drawn from individuals at very different stages of their career in science and, are, and that are doing very different things. So that these are assets where a variety of individuals from actually around the world create narratives that speak to how they got to science, how they got engaged, etc. And it gives us a chance when we're teaching a topic to drop in narratives, where if you're teaching something about um, computer science, you can now drop in roots narrative and someone can see that, you know what, a young person can really do something remarkable, make it in computer science, form her own company and do something amazing. And so the idea, and it's one of the gold standards of more inclusive teaching, is to make this kind of work more visible, more effectively integratable into how you teach. So lab exchange is sweet spot in terms of grades, if you will, is basically high school and college at the moment. We're increasingly adding material on the platform for middle school. So we're sort of broadening out over time. Do keep in mind, we're only six months old. So we're sort of doing our best to move as fast as we, as we can. But the other thing I want to share with you, actually, if you go to the library, you know, you can filter by all kinds of content, is what we call clusters. And so we've built a cluster, for example, in collaboration with Fair Opportunity, and for high school teachers out there, you might find this interesting, that will help students apply to college and how to pay for it, right? So each of these is a pathway, right? So here's the pathway on the college application process. Oh, I don't know why loading is so slow. This shouldn't be. I think having Zoom running is actually killing my Wi-Fi, probably. That's what's going on. But I think what's important here is that each of these is its own pathway, so when you think about which college is right for me, I swear it's there, it will load um, if you go at, with your own Wi-Fi, but we also have tours. So if you want to figure out how to afford college, how to complete the application, life after high school, the idea is that we're trying to create these new clusters. Here's one on core concepts in biology for AP, where if you want to teach your students about cell structure and function, heredity, et cetera, each of these are pathways that are designed for AP. And so we're trying to build a lot of materials because with, with each of these pathways, you as a high school teacher can clone a pathway, put it into your private class, adapt it and add your own material as you see fit. So everyone's been talking about the new normal in terms of what online learning will look like. And everyone's kind of scared of what this will be. And of course, I completely understand that. But what I would argue right now is that we have an opportunity to make the new normal a better normal. And so you now have access to the tools and the materials to create an online learning experience for your students for free that is at the level of the best MOOC out there. So you can make your own mini MOOC as you see fit you now have the power to do that. So before Dave cuts me off, I'm gonna end here, but I'd love to take any questions that I know that Dave has been looking at the, um, at the chat. So I'm gonna sort of turn things over to Dave to feed me some questions. I will, I will. Un unshare your screen. Yes. Um, your timing is perfect. Um, you, could, you could tell Robert's a pro at doing distance education. He's, he's got it all down. <laughs> well, he's I don't great. know if I'm a pro, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, maybe. Okay. Um, so many comments here. First of all, thank you. That was fabulous. Um, you are going to win the I Can't Believe This Is Free Award. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> 
I can tell no, you. No, it's free. I mean, but, but the fact you raised that, Dave, I'm tired of free stuff being sometimes not great. Free should be as good as it can get. And that is, that is something, you know, with, with edX and Harvard X, we wanted to do that. And now we want to really put it in the hands of everyone. You can build questions like a MOOC builder on your own for your students. Free should be awesome. We have the resources in this world to make that happen. So, yeah. I, I, I saw, I love this guy coming about. I think you're fantastic too. I, I don't love you, but I think you're fantastic. <laughs> oh, I'm so hurt. I think you're amazing. <laughs> I like you a lot. <laughs> I, I know why you're saying that, you know. You're like, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> You know, folks, we have this coastal thing. He's West Coast, I'm East Coast. So, you know, he holds that against me. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we may have to go there. But I'll tell you, Ileana did my job. Ileana, I see on there, thank you. You're answering a lot of, a lot of questions. Actually, I think people are, are a little upset that it's free. They want to give you money. I, I, there's people who are asking, do you take donations? Um, actually, I, 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 I don't know if we have, in fact, set up to take uh, um, donations, but I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. But you uh, know what, I mean, we, we really, the only way we're going to allow quality learning to reach scale is if things are free. Right now, we're focused on what we can do with the internet, and it's true. There are situations, there are many, many people out there that won't have access to the internet, but it's also entirely true that there are tens of millions that have access to the internet that don't have access to really good online learning. So we can't boil the ocean, we can't do everything. So what we're focused on for now is sort of an internet-based model. Yeah, yeah. The, no, I, th this is, everybody's got that, and I, I, you, you're getting a tremendous amount of love here. And, and, and clearly when, I, when you and I first talked, and when I, I met with your team, this is what you're doing is really important stuff and it's really valuable. So really, thank you. There were some good questions here. I know Ileana is answering some of them, but let me grab a couple uh, NGSS standards. Ah, uh, right. So that is, that is a really important question. We have not um, done full alignment with the NGSS standards of the entire library. What we're hoping to do and that's where, for example, the AP biology cluster that we built, it's kind of a starting point for us. It's very hard to get, well, actually, it's, it's not that hard. We can do this. But um, we're just starting, and we don't have the bandwidth, quite frankly, to do all of the NGSS alignment. And our partners don't have the bandwidth to do it either. So what we're trying to do is when we assemble the content into clusters and pathways that teachers can use as pre-built components that they can then adapt we're going to try and do the alignment with NGSS as best as we can. Now, that being said, if there are folks out there that want to work with us to help us get it, the entire platform is set up for this. We have a meta tagging system like you wouldn't believe. So we could meta tag to help everything based on the standards. We already have drop down menus, for example, that could actually list standards we literally just don't have the human capital to actually do that yet. But it's something that we do care a lot about, and we're certainly thinking about that. We know it's very important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there could be a grant or something. I mean, there's, there's ways to accelerate that, right? Uh, or yes. donations or, or, or yes. something. And, and it's sort of along those same lines. We're also thinking about language as well. Uh, so, so that was going to be one of my questions, too, is localization. So that you're thinking about that. Yes, yes. And so, in fact... All of the material that we've built in molecular and cell biology, we got a, a grant to translate it into 14 languages. So that's going to happen over the next six months, six to 12 months. Um, because, but, and it's not just raw translation. It's actually translation and cultural situating of the material in 14 languages. So that we're very excited about. But we also have actually a number of organizations that have reached out to us and will partner with us as like the translation partners. So for example, we're in conversations, I probably shouldn't say this, but we're in conversations with the government of France to do a major French translation of science sort of thing into French content, etc. The platform already has a language dropdown. So once this is ready, 
once we have multiple languages, you will be able to filter by language very easily. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And um, I do I have a couple other questions. Wait, let me, um, there's a lot of people who would like to see this go down to middle school and I yes. you see you know, elementary. Um, I'm sure you're thinking about that, right? Oh, very much so. I mean, this was something we knew from the beginning that ultimately we lose so many sort of students, future scientists in middle school. And so, you know, waiting till high school is not soon enough, right? So we really need to do things in middle school. So we're starting to connect with, so we are building a consortium of partners, of content partners, network partners, et cetera, to help us start to add that kind of content. Um, we focused on high school to college because quite frankly, that is my sweet spot. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you sort of focus on the area that you know you did best. What you, know. you did what yes, you know exactly. first, right? Yeah. Um, but without question, we're going to be doing middle school. And we've already started to do some materials on the platform that are more appropriate for middle school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a, a question looking through your demo that uh, playing through your site wasn't obvious to me. Um, could a teacher create these? I, I might have your terminology wrong, but could a teacher create a pathway and then share it? Yes, yes. Okay. So one, one powerful way of sharing a pathway. So this notion of a class. So we have teachers that are actually creating classes and then inviting other teachers into the classes as well and sharing the material, right? And so there are ways in which we have groups that are actually beginning to do professional development for teachers through the platform. So that in fact, you can create a paradigmatic class and then get other teachers to play with the materials, look at the materials, critique the materials, et cetera. So yes, yes, that, that's certainly possible. Yeah. And you can clone pathways. So yeah, right. So you, I'm pleased about, this came on relatively recently. So I've built a number of my pathways from the spring course. I'm teaching a summer course. I've cloned them, readapted them for the summer. And so you, you really need to be able to do that. Yeah. So I think that's what a teacher wants to do is they want to remix, like take something. Oh, and totally. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would probably be the best thing. Yes. Um, yeah, elementary. The, I, I'll tell you, you you know this already. You have a hit here. Uh, it's a great, you know, when I the first time I saw I couldn't believe what it does. It's really amazing. Um, there were some questions here. So just by the way, uh, we do the signups with everybody. We don't always have the check boxes for every presenter because we don't nail them down. Uh, so somebody's saying, I want to get lab exchange information. Uh, here's my suggestion. First of all, go to their site, sign up. Uh, but also, um, you know, ho hopefully, uh, Robert, somebody from your team can join the, the Facebook group. Oh, uh, absolutely. It, Actually, we're already there. Okay, great. So if we're somebody ready, posts there and say, hey, I need information or how to use or whatever, um, you know, you guys can jump in. This is just yeah. an open forum for everybody. And, and by the way, lab exchange loves passionate teachers. We have a whole program where teachers are working with us, they're reviewing materials, they're giving their feedback, they're getting early access to new things. We have, I think, over probably, I think over 70 teachers that are wor yeah. working with us already. So, you know, if, if you want to work with us, let us know. Go to the site, you can contact us through the site. You want to talk about passionate teachers. We, Cliff and I were just reviewing the logs. There's, there's thousands of teachers signed up from Asia. So they are on now, it might be, what is it, three in the morning? Oh my goodness, yes, that's commitment. That's, that's passionate, commitment. in the summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you got, you got a group of uh, passionate teachers. Here. There's a lot of questions I'm seeing. There's Google Classroom, Canvas, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get those, Clever, yes. uh, you know, Schoology. So I, I'll let Ileana handle those, is we gotta go to a break in a, in a minute or so. Um, Ileana, thank you. You're doing a great job on this. Ileana and, and, and Robert, if you want to stay on as a panelist, you could stay in the chat. Don't worry. I just answer questions and, uh, you know, we have a, uh, a 10 minute break and then uh, Killer Snails is coming on next. And nobody's going to mind if there's questions that you're just finishing off. Um, okay. That's, that's why we're here just to connect you uh, with these great resources. Of course. Fantastic. And, and, and I should say that um, Ileana is a member of the Lab Exchange team. Yes. So she is. She's just amazing and has really, really jumped into things. But yes, I will. So I guess the best thing to do, Dave, is for me to go into chat, but address things to panelists and attendees. Yes, panelists and attendees. Okay. That's where most of the, 
If you yeah. just do panelists, just we will see it. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, so you want to do panelists and attendees. And, um, but then also, let's move the conversation over to the Facebook group. I see Scott posted the Facebook group. But use that. I'll tell you, there are about 6,000 uh, teachers on there, passionate teachers from all over the world, uh, all science. Uh, maybe there are a few non-science who snuck in. But if you're cool, you can come. That's okay. You have to be cool, and you can be part of the group. Uh, keep the conversation going there. These people are there to help you and respond. And, uh, you know, that's, that's where we'll leave it. Robert, I can't thank you enough. You have a... Well, it's been a pleasure, and thanks for listening, folks. And I look forward to back and forth on the Facebook group. I think yeah. it'll be fun. Like, likewise, and let's keep in touch. I love what you're doing. It's, it's fantastic. So thank you, James. This was really, really great. So okay. I'm going to take a look at the – because, by the way, I'm too old to do both video and chat at the same time. So now <laughs> I can look at the chat window. <laughs>